but I hope okay. I can I can manage this. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty pretty quick compared to the the other presentations because it's slightly different uh, in in the kind of in terms of end goal, which we will go through. But uh, let's let's start simple. So, what's what's the idea? So, uh, I'm going to I'm going to be talking about cellular automata, but it's kind of like when you're talking about networks, it's it's very it's very unintuitive and hard to kind of give a general definition for a network. What what you generally do is you start by say but by by just talking about the most simple non degenerate form of network that you can you can think of which is just like some nodes and some links interacting with each other it's a it's a graph right uh, same here i'm going to start by the most uh, simple non degenerate cellular automata which is in in many people's opinion is elementary cellular automata cuz uh when you want to think about it it's just a, a an infinite array of bits or or cells that can have one of two states so zero or one or black or white uh where usually white is zero but uh, and uh th there is also a, a rule for the evolution of the system which is at each step each of the cells update its value based on its current state and its two neighbor states so cell i at time t plus one would be a function of cell i at t, cell i plus one, and i minus one at t. Uh, and is that, uh, this, is, this is as simple as it can get, right? We can't have a unary uh, state for each cell, right? But a unary state will always stay the same. It's, it's, it's a degenerate system. Uh, we can't have a, a smaller neighborhood. Well, we kind of can have an, uh, an asymmetric neighborhood system just based on the one on the right and the one on the left. But uh, smaller than that, it's not really possible. And the one on the right and the left is also, when you think about it, that's gonna that's gonna limit the number of uh, the number of possible systems to a very small and very uninteresting ones. So this is the this is the smallest interesting cellular automata and uh, yeah here, here's an example uh, you can see let me try to okay now there's a uh, pointer yeah so uh, this is part of our bit array and uh, for example we want to this is our state at, at t equals t some 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 initial state we want to update this uh, cell, we, we look up in our rule set or table of rules and see, okay, this one, uh, its neighborhood is a 0, 1, 1. So 0, 1, 1, the next state for this cell in question should be a 1. And then we, we go to, we, we update it uh, here. So this one updates into that one. So, so is with, the, with is another example. So you have to remember that this is an infinite array of cells. So there are an infinite number of, for example, zeros here, the infinite white cells here and infinite white cells there. So we want to update this invisible cell. Uh, I, I, have, I have this example on purpose because sometimes you just draw this, but then in the next state you see there are more cells. So these cells existed, they, they just had the value zero. So here the, the neighborhood of this invisible cell is zero, zero, one. If we look up zero, zero, one, it should be one. So we Put the put the cell with value one here. Uh, okay. All good and well. Uh, well, when, when you think about it, there's only a, a very limited number of uh, a very limited number of uh, possible uh, rules for for the system this simple. Uh, all possible rule sets can have or should have this form of this eight different neighborhood configuration can have these different values. How many different values? Well, uh, each of these can have can be zero or one, so it's 256 possible rules of the system. And uh, it's, it's even made simpler by the fact that you can kind of 
see equivalence relationship between certain rules. Some of them are mirror images of the other one. Some of them are uh, a complement of, of another rule where, where you flip zeros and ones. So all in all, if you remove all the, all the duplicate rules, there would be like 88 uh, unique or, or inequivalent rules remaining. And uh, Stephen Warfram came up with, with this kind of very simple naming scheme, which you just order the rules in this specific uh, order from 111 to 000. And then you just turn the, the binary uh, notation uh, of, of this results into, into decimal. So this one is, for example, rule 30, because it's 000, 1111, 0. And 30 is easier to say. So less, less informative, but easier to say. Uh, OK. So if, if there are 88 of them. So you can go through all of them. That's, that's exactly what Simon Wolfram did, and many others also did a different, different kind of uh, cellular automata. So he printed all of them and went on a plane and started looking at all of them. So uh, it's, when, you, when you do that, it's, if you go to Wikipedia, there's a list of all these 88. Uh, and uh, and uh, all of them evolved from some random initial state. Uh, and you, look, you, you can see uh, kind of three or four different classes. Uh, it's easiest one to distinguish is, is, is the most boring. Uh, uniform state class, so well, called class one by Stephen Wolfram again, uh, where you start from any random configuration or almost any random configuration, you immediately or very rapidly uh, evolve into all cells having exactly the same state. So all going to zero or all going to one, uh, which is not really interesting, right? Uh, uh, a little bit more interesting is is the case that some some random initial state would relatively rapidly converge into uh, stable or cyclic or repetitive states where cycles can have any finite uh, size. So here you can see. Uh, a, a stable instance here, it immediately goes into this static state. It doesn't change at all. Uh, and uh, you, you, here you see a cycle of length two. So from, from this, this turn down, they are repeated. Uh, uh, two, two states are repeated cyclically. So this is, uh, okay, this is, this is the kind of stuff you would, you would expect of a system this simple, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't expect any, any sort of uh, complexity here because the system is so simple. Well, this is kind of gambit doesn't work because all of you people are working on, on, uh, on emergent, emergent behavior. So you're, you're kind of familiar with the, with the idea of simple systems creating complex behavior. But in, in the 80s, this was this was very, very new idea that but that there are these two classes which are kind of not interesting, but then there are other classes which are far more interesting. An example is, uh, is this one. This uh, rule 30, for example, and among other ones, have this property of apparent randomness. Which is, I'm trying to be very careful here, because talking about randomness on, on, on some, some machine like this, or pseudo randomness, that's very hard. Uh, but, but the idea is that uh, this, is the, this is the same sort of random we're talking about as when we were saying the digits of pi are random. The digits of pi are not random. Right, you can you can calculate what's the probability of tenth digit of pi being two? Well, it's it's well you calculate it. It's either zero or one, right? It's either is two or is not two. But we can still we can still say something some 
we can assign some behavior to that that we would assign to a random systems like uh, uh, like it's it's not easy to to guess the nth digit uh, without doing n step of work, right? You can't know nth digit by just knowing n minus one, and so on. Uh, or the distribution of of these states seem to be like if you see a pattern, like in the last ten digits and the next ten digits, these patterns are not going to be. Uh, their occurrence is going to be independent from each other and so on that that sort of stuff uh, so this this rule 30 to 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 all of our tests from 80s onward it's, this is this is looking as as random as as a system can this can be uh, actually uh, in in mathematica up until a few years ago if you ask for for a random number generator, it would generate your random number by applying this. So, yeah, it's as random as 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 it can um, as, as you would want. But but you have to be uh, careful about this. So he, here is another one, starting from uh, from random initial conditions. This is what's called rule ninety, and it's, this looks. I mean, these these two kind of look similar, right? This, you, you can't see any any sort of uh, nice behavior or or classifiable dynamics in this, as you can see in the rule, rule thirty. But if you start, what, what if you start from a not so random initial state? If you if you start from just one single point, you'll see that okay, this is not really this is not really random, right? And and it even gets worse. This this rule third, this rule ninety is known as an, as what, what's known as an additive rule. Is that if you if you start from two points, it's it's the same as starting from one. So so starting from each of those and then adding the results up. So add so starting two different cellular automata and then adding the results on two together, right? That would produce this if you start from a random initial condition. So again, you have to be really careful here. But this property is not shared by, by for example, the earlier one I mentioned, this rule 30. Uh, this doesn't have the additive property. This, uh, this, if you start from, uh, from nice initial conditions, it's not gonna show niceties like, like rule 90. That's not going to show any nice properties. Um, so, so this one is different. It's actually uh, not not proven that this is this is random. It's actually an open open question, and there's like a thirty thousand dollar price if you can if you can prove that there are no 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 uh, periodicities in this uh, and, and two other questions. Which are closely related to each other. You can you can go and check that out. But uh, but as as good as as we can get it, if you if you evolve this if a few million steps, you you would st still not see any periodicities in the for example in the center center row uh, center column. Sorry. Uh, but but if you look further. You you would see even, uh, to, in my opinion, more more interesting and uh, and more complex results. So so somewhere between between these worlds of of randomness and order, there's this thin shell of of complexity. But 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 you have to look very closely to see it. So so this is this is rule one ten. If if you look at it, this kind of looks random, right? Uh, but if you if you go a little bit further down, you'd see hmm, there's some uh, some some islands of stability, which kind of what are these things that are going down or left or right and there's something going on. This is not this doesn't look like. It's rule 30, 
right? Uh, so obviously the next step is go even further down. And you see, okay, the, these things are actually moving and they're, they're, they, they look like they're interacting with each other in com complicated ways. And sometimes they're passing, sometimes they're, they're annihilating each other, sometimes they combine to form some other entities, sometimes they pass right through each other. Uh, there's all sorts of, all sorts of weird behavior. Uh, but, but there are things in there, right? That's, uh, that's, that's the beauty of it. There are, uh, if, if you were living in, in a world that was made out of rule 110, you would assign particles and, and, and entities to, to these, uh, these creatures. Uh, but okay, let's let's leave that for later. Uh, let's let's talk about let's talk about complexity. Okay, can can we put a, any sort of boundaries on on what what kind of complex behaviors this, for example, rule rule one ten can show? What's the what's the variety, or uh, how complex can it be? How, how how divergent this, this complexity can be. It's a, it's a very kind of badly framed and kind of open-ended question, but uh, because this whole cellular automata world is, uh, is based on, on a concept of computation, that's, that's the first place you look. You see what kind of computations can this rule want to perform. So, so it's been proven by, by a couple of different people in parallel that uh, th there is there is a mapping from from any Turing machine to to a specific initial state that when you run rule one hundred ten on it that would that would perform the computation that would emulate that Turing machine completely through some some other kind of uh, inter intermediate machine called the cyclic tag system, uh, and and it's known beforehand that you can you can encode any computer algorithm as as a Turing machine. So t Turing machine, I don't I don't know, probably a, you're familiar with it already, but it's a it's a it's a very simple uh, kind of thought experiment. It's a, it's a machine that has a tape and and a head. And, and an internal rule that can uh, read, write, uh, and move the tape right to left. And it is shown by Turing and others that you can, you can uh, encode any computer algorithm into, into a Turing machine. And the Turing machine would be able to, to run the algorithm to, to perform the results. So anything you can run on your normal computer uh, and more, because on your normal computer would have would have limited resources in memory, but the Turing machine has infinite, uh, infinite tape, and so does so does uh, the infinite array of uh, of uh, uh, elementary cellular automata. But uh, okay, I just wanna I just wanna kind of reiterate this 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 thing is had or can produce as complicated a result, as complex a behavior as any other thing you can emulate on your computer. So, I don't know, networks? Sure, you can, you can encode any network algorithm on, on rule 110. This most simple kind of universal computer. This mo most simple is not uh, it's it's in it's in quotations. It's not uh, so proven. You can't say what is most simple, but uh, as far as I've seen, that's the most simple. Uh, yeah, to me, to me, this is mind blowing. Well, I don't know about you. Uh, it's even more mind blowing than than the randomness. But there is an argument. About the, about the randomness, about the, about the rule thirties of the of the uh, cellular automata, is that something 
some think that there are ways or that there is a possibility that you could also show that one of those class trees, for example, could also behave in the same way, could also encode, you can also encode any computer algorithm from one of those random ones. But this is, this is again, a, an open question. And this is not an easy question. It's not, uh, you don't have nice entities that move to the right and move to the left and interact with each other on a nice repetitive background and uh, then you can you can engineer based on them another well-known kind of machine another well-known computer and then show that uh, i don't know for example rule 30 is also universal in terms of computation but uh, it's this is an open question so it's a good thing to think about uh but but the way i think about this is again there's this bubble bubble of randomness and there's this world of boring and then there's this thin shell of interesting stuff it's kind of uh it's a, it's a repetitive pattern in in other other such systems you see most initial conditions most most set of rules produce boring results there's only a thin shell of interesting results usually uh, but this is all just hand waving uh, there's all sorts of, kind of extensions of generalizations on on this elementary cellular automata then into kind of more general cellular automata so, so the more general cellular automata is is finite dimensional so it can be three dimensional can be 15 dimensional doesn't matter uh, it can't be infinite finite dimensional based on the definition that wouldn't be a cellular automata uh, there's all but, but you can use any definition of neighborhood you can you can think for example on on two dimensional grids it's a it's uh, possible to use just up, down, left, right, or north, west, northeast, etc. So, or or even like two steps, or like a two two layer shell neighborhood, or or any definition of neighborhood. So, for example, this game of life or life is a two dimensional with. Uh, the neighborhood of top down left right top right top left and, and all the all the others so this is uh, and a specific set of rules that would be called game of life uh, just just up to this point uh, up, up to up to here up, I want you to think think about this that okay now that we are adding more more freedom the system and extend the set of rules our, our set of rules is not 256 anymore right uh, it, it, it's going to be much easier to find interesting uh, or, or not not necessarily easier but th there's going to be more interesting examples more interesting machines set of rules or initial conditions that that's going to be available to you so Again, like if, you, if you just think about this two-dimensional grids, many of them are universal. The game of life is universal. You can you can make a Turing machine out of it. It's it's gonna it's actually very beautiful. You can see videos of it. It's not gonna not gonna look as nice, but uh, but from from this point down, so it's this this last two, this is kind of what what is in my opinion neighboring areas there's a synchronous uh, update rules so for example you don't update all cells at once you update node i then then you update node j then you update and so on so that's that's a, a kind of an extension on this that would produce all sorts of other other behavior and then kind of the next step or, or slightly different than this would be kind of substitution systems. 
it's kind of debatable is are these two how these two are related this uh, cellular automata and substitution systems which is uh simplest one is like string substitution system you would say your set of rules would be each each rule would be whenever you see this substring replace it with that substring so for example if you're abc and your rule is replace b with abc then after a while you see a a a a a a and then c c c c c c c right uh, but there might be multiple ways you can update then then you have to deal with this asynchronous or synchronous update systems then then there are set substitution systems that you your your rules would be the same but unordered right so if you see this subset turn it into that or that view subset uh, then well the next step is now now that we have things working on sets you can you can have graph substitution systems you see this if you see this subgraph replace it with that subgraph and so on at each step and uh, recently there's been a lot of talk about this hypergraph substitution systems just this uh, for example is the Wolfram physics project if you've heard, heard about it that's uh, so the idea there is that a hypergraph substitution system is a good candidate for a for a, a general model model of, of the universe or something like that. I don't want I don't want to get into that, but uh, definitely has a lot of a lot of shows a lot of complex behavior. Uh, so 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 what so all of this? Uh, it's, it's been a little bit different than than what what we previously seen on like other talks. This is this doesn't doesn't look like physics. There there what 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 are we trying to model? What is there is there a forest fire? What it can do? Can it can it tell us something about the brain? Not really. This is different. This is uh, the the way I look at this is that this is not about one specific image and behavior. Or, or modeling a real world uh, phenomena. Uh, the, the point here is to learn more about, about the world, about, about scientific method, for example. Uh, so, so historically, this, this came about as, as a result of as a result of a reductionist attitude, von Neumann and a guy named Ulam, they, they were talking about self-reproducing systems. As von Neumann is well known to, to talk about, uh, and uh, and how difficult it is to to to, to think about this in uh, in real world, a, a robot that can make another copy of itself. Right? There's all sorts of weird things that real world doesn't like about this idea it's like physical things I don't know, your gear, gears grind together that sort of that sort of problem so th they were bored by by this problem probably so so they started taking this reductionist attitude of, of what happens in a cell in a grid of cells and can we have kind of self reproducing things in there but 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 this has been taken to an extreme. This has been completely going devoid of of relationship to real world. Uh, from that point on, from nineteen sixties on. Uh, going back to 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 rule one ten. If if I was I was, as I was saying. If if you were living in a world made of rule one ten, and you were a scientist, and you were looking and measuring, and seeing all sorts of complicated things, to all appearances moving and interacting, what is most natural for for a physicist to do is to try to catalog particles 
and interactions. They say, this is a puffer fish, this is a glider gun, and that is a, uh, these, are, these are all, that's a, that's a spaceship. These are all, these are all uh, vernacular from, from Game of Life, right? That's what people do right now. Uh, how different is this to, to, to the world we live in? So, so the Feynman was not very happy, famously, with the laws of the universe. Is that, is that it's, it doesn't seem right that you, you would have to do an infinite amount of calculations to get any information about infinitesimally small space and time uh, regions right it doesn't 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 look right it doesn't it doesn't feel like something that the world is about so the, the, he had this hypothesis that at some point there's going to be a machinery revealed and then turn this all into, into a simple kind of dynamic, something like we saw in rule 110 or something like how, how the complexity is completely emergent in something like checkers or chess, right? The rules are simple. The, the rules, the idea here is that the rules should be deadly simple. So yeah, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.